There you go. That's a better fish. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's a much better fish. That's a much better fish. Yeah, get him away from these bushes. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go. Oh my gosh, Carrie! <laughs> get him in. Okay. Well, wait, well, wait. Yeah, why don't you take him in? Oh, keep attention on him. Yeah, keep attention on that. Let me see. Oh, wait, no, you're not going to be able to. There's cameras. I know. Come here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Oh! A giant! Oh, oh, oh! Ha ha! Ha ha! She's heavy. Well, that's a picture of that one, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take one right here. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're looking for here. <laughs> That is what we're looking for. Nice. Ready? Yes. Now you're spoiled. I'm spoiled. You won't want any more dings. Whoa! Whoa goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about drop shotting. Specifically, the best times and places to fish a drop shot. Now, the, the logical obvious thing is, hey, you can fish a drop shot year round. Well, yeah, true, but it changes throughout the year and the reasons why you fish it change throughout the year. So I wanna walk you through that, starting with the spring. In the springtime, these fish are moving up shallow and in the very early stages of the spring, they're real skittish when they first come up. You can just move your arm and bam, they're gone. <laughs> they disappear. So this is when a drop shot really comes in handy because it's a real subtle bait. It doesn't put off a lot of action. It's not gonna spook them. So what I like to do is in the early spring, they're coming up usually on the outside points and then moving into the secondary points up in the creek channels and they start to work themselves up towards the flats. So those, that, that structure works really well for a drop shot. And I just like to throw it out there and I work it, I give it a little bit of action and we usually moving the rod tip like this you know you just want to give it a little bit of move, movement see how this is already dancing around just for me doing that just a little bit of shake you can see my hand isn't moving much but that bait is dancing all around so just give it a little bit of shaking action while you're working it down a point and a lot of times it attracts the attention of the bass and they bite it what i also like to do is during that time of year the hydrilla and the milfoil is just beginning to grow it's just when it starts to turn green that's when the bass move in and start feeding on on bait fish so that's a good time what i like to do then is i'll take the leader here and the leader will be long enough to get this bait just above those, emer those emergent weeds so they're visible it keeps the bait up above it so it doesn't sink down inside the weeds keeps it up there where the bass can find it and you can catch a lot of fish doing that this also works really well Later on in the spring when the fish are getting up shallow, they get up under docks. I really like throwing this alongside docks and just working it along the edge of the dock and it entices those fish to come up underneath it. This is really a good technique to use when you know, you've got a lot of fronts coming through in the springtime and every time a front comes through, it tends to shut down the bite. They're not as willing to go chase down a, a lure like a spinnerbait or a crankbait. That's when this really shines. That's when you want to break this out. This is not like a search type bait but it's a good bait to use when the bite is slow and you got an idea where the fish are hanging, that's when you bring it out. Now, one more thing to talk about in the spring is during the spawn. You can use a drop shot, cast it out there, and let it land on the other side of the bed, and then let it sit there. And all you're doing is you're lifting up on the, on the rod tip, and all you're doing is you're just letting that bait dance right over the bed like so and you know unless this is spinning around a lot I have another video on how to rig this I use a spin shot hook so I'll show you that more in another video I got a link down the bottom of this one so you can look at it in more detail but you're just using it to bounce that bait up and down over the top of the bed and that 
aggravates the fish, eventually they're going to bite it. So the type of bait I'll use during that time is, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a bright, visible bait that you can see when you, cause you can see the bite. So I usually use like a white tube or a chartreuse tube, uh, some kind of bait like that, or a white grub. Something small that the, the fish, when he grabs it, he's not just grabbing the tail, he has to bite the whole thing. That's typically what I like to use. Shot finesse worm. But moving into the summertime, things change a little bit. Now the bass are, some are up shallow and they stay shallow all year round. And that's a great time. You can, you can fish it the exact same way I was telling you with the, like you do in the spring. But in the summer, a lot of bass also move to offshore structure. So you want to move out there and start fishing that. And again, it's when the bite isn't very strong. During those days when the fish aren't aggressively feeding, that's when you break out the drop shot. And during the summer, fish, all they want to eat are bait fish. They are eating, eating, eating on bait fish. So what you want to use is a bait that mimics that. So what I'll use is, is something like this, like a yum pulse minnow. Okay, I like to use that on a drop shot. Can you see that? I'll put that on a drop shot, okay? Just nose hook it, and it looks just like a little bait fish, and I'll throw it out there in that, those rock piles and those humps, anywhere that's you know 10 to 15 feet and deeper, points, ridges, drop-offs, creek channels. Those are the things I like to fish on the drop shot, especially when the, the, the bite is really off. And it's good to use in current too. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll heavy up a bit on the, on the weight and I'll use more like a quarter ounce to a half ounce weight depending on the current. Now if the current's really strong, here's how you tell. I can't give you an exact weight to use, but if you cast upstream and the bait gets by you and it still hasn't hit the bottom, you need to add more weight. Keep doing it until it finally hits the bottom and now you've got enough weight. So you know, a quarter ounce to half is usually a good starting point. You may have to go higher than that, but a drop shot works really well in current. You get back behind those eddies and break points where the fish will be hanging out and they're not in a real biting mood in the dog days of summer. That's a great place to place a drop shot with that pulse minnow. And man, you can have a shelf a heyday out there in current catching fish like that. Now, as you move into fall, things change again. Hey, you got something. Finally. He caught a fish on the drop shot. There we go. It's a little smallmouth. We'll take it. A little smallmouth on a drop shot. Now the fish are moving up shallow. If you live in the southern uh, part of the North America, there's a lot of shad and they shad move up shallow to, uh, in the fall. So they move up in the backs of coves, back bays of the shallow areas and the bass are gonna follow to feed. So again, we're gonna go back to some of the same techniques we're using in the springtime, a little bit of combination of summer because what happens, they don't go all the way to the backs of flats, for example, but they get up there on those creek channels and those secondary points. They'll get up under docks and those stump fields, those type of things. That's where a good place to fish a drop shot rig is right in those areas. Again, when the bite isn't really strong, that's where I'll fish it. Again, using the pulse minnow because they're feeding on bait fish. Now, if you don't live in the southern part of North America, you live in the northern climates, we don't have so much shad, but what we do have is perch and bluegill. And what happens is the perch, you know, they'll ball up, they start to school up as you move deeper and deeper into fall and they're a little bit offshore. You need to find them with your graph. But I'll take that drop shot, I'll add some weight to it, quarter ounce to a half ounce with that pulse minnow. Because what happens is the bass get up underneath those schools of perch and they'll feed on the weak ones. 
So the trick is, is you've got to find that ball, get that drop shot and punch it through that perch down underneath where the bass are waiting. And I use a heavier weight to do that because perch, man, they'll, they'll chew up plastics in a heartbeat. If you've been around them, you know what I'm talking about. So a heavier weight, I can get it through that school of perch quicker without them mauling it. So I can get it down to those bass that are waiting underneath. If you can get through that school, the bass are down there, you're going to get hit and you're going to get a good fish. So that's a great way to fish drop shot in the fall. Ooh, you're pulling like you're mean. There you go. That's pulling a bit better. like you're mean. That's a good fish. There, there you go. That's a large mouth. Boy, oh boy, you are not happy with me. There we go. That does the trick. That does the trick. Drop shot fish. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Much better fish. <laughs> Much better. That That's what we've been waiting all day for. Uh, That's a good one. Thank you, dude. Put a little belly on him. Yeah, that works. Put a little fish. Drop shotting. Here you go, baby. Thank you for the play. That was fun. Slowly just saunters off. <laughs> <laughs> Into the winter time, it's a little bit different. Now, the fish almost always are, are exclusively deep. You can find some shallow, but it's few and far between. So I focus on the deeper areas like we did in the summertime. Same type of structure, you know, rock piles, humps, ridges, ledges, creek beds, deeper water. <clears throat> and this, this can be really deep. My neck of the woods, dead of winter, fish are four, 45 to 55 feet deep. So you need to get really deep. But I won't use a super heavy weight. I'll still use an eighth ounce to maybe quarter ounce weight, maybe at the most. It really depends on wind. Because what I want to do is I want to get that bait all the way down there. I take the rod tip and I'm holding the rod down. I'm just holding it down along the side of the boat. Usually I'm fishing like this. I'll just bring it down. I'm holding it down the side of the boat. And I just kind of get on the trolling motor and I move it maybe at speed 10 up to 15. I don't even go 20 or I'll just let the wind drift. But I want that bait to get all the way down to the bottom and just sit there and kind of bounce along the weight. I want the weight to bounce along the bottom and, and real nice and slow. So I want a bait that's the weight is heavy enough to keep it down there. So if the wind's really blowing then and it's blowing the line around, I might get a little bit heavier weight just in order to keep maintain contact with the bottom. But as light as I can get away with. And during that time of year, I'm using a finesse worm. I don't want a lot of action, a lot of appendages. So something like a yum finesse worm, or like this is a robo worm. This is an Aaron's magic color. I like color peoples as well. I know that that's a color guys, peoples. But just a real nice, it's like a hand pour type bait. Has really has no action to it. And that's perfect in the winter time. You don't want a lot of movement. So just sitting on the bottom and you're just dragging it along. I'm not bopping the rod tip. I'm not moving it and dancing it around. Just dragging it across that structure, nice and slow and easy. The bait, the, the weight is really making the action. The weight is moving and bouncing across the bottom and contours and it's making that bait shimmer and shake. And that's all you need. You don't need to do any more than that. And you'll catch a lot of fish that way. So those are the different times and places I fish a drop shot. I hope that helps. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.